Hare Krishna. Today is Radhashtami, so instead of the Gita class, we will read something from Chaitanya Charitamrita and speak a little bit about the appearance of Srimati Radharani. I will start by singing a song by Rupa Goswami called Sri Radhika Stava from the Stava Mala Prayers to Radharani by Rupa Goswami. Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Gokula Taruni Mandala Mohite Kula Taruni Mandala Mohite Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Tamodara Rati Bardana Bishi Hari Niskutavri Indani Pineshi Damodara Rati Bardana Bishi Hari Niskutavri Indani Pineshi Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Kukula Taruni Mandala Mohite Kula Taruni Mandala Mohite Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Vishabhanu Dadi Navasashi Leke Lalita Shaki Gunaramita Bishake Vishabhanu Dadi Navasashi Leke Lalita Shaki Gunaramita Vishake Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Kukula Taruni Mandala Mohite Kukula Taruni Mandala Mohite Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Karuna Makuru Mai Karuna Bharite Shanaka Shanatana Varnita Charite Karuna Makuru Mai Karuna Bharite Sanaka Sanatana Varnita Charite Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Kukula Taruni Mandala Mohite Kukula Taruni Mandala Mohite Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Radhe Jayo Jayo Madhava Daite Jayam Vishnu Pada Paramahansa Paripyasaka Chajya Sutara Sata 
Shri Shri Madesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shira Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Namacha Jasila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Premsika Ho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Shamuna Mai Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Tulsi Devi Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. All glory to Sri Sri Radhika Maharani Ki Jai, Sri Sri Radhasnami Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande. So we will read a few verses from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It is not very often that we get an opportunity to speak about Srimati Radharani. In fact, I listen to Prabhupada's lectures daily and I've lis listened to them many times and practically Shiro Prabhupada only speaks about Srimati Radharani on her appearance day today. Otherwise, he doesn't talk about her. Similarly, if you study Krishna's Lila's Krishna's activities, Krishna never ever speaks about Srimati Radharani, very, very rarely, only indirectly, because it is a very, very confidential subject matter. It's like Radharani is Krishna's most beloved associate, most beloved girlfriend. She's very secret, very confidential, and Krishna doesn't reveal that unless you're qualified unless, just like if i have a wife or a girlfriend i don't intimately introduce her to anybody else unless i trust that person to respect my wife or my girlfriend in the same way krishna does not give knowledge of the beauty and the position of srimati radharani even of her existence unless he's sure that you're qualified to accept that knowledge without making any offenses. So, Aparam Kashyapi Pranai Jana Vrindasya Kutuki Rasastu Maritva Maduram Upabhoktum Kamapiya Rucham Swama Varedyutim Ihatadim Prakatyayam Sadevas Chaitanya Kritir Atitaram Nakripataya. Translation Lord Krishna desired to taste the limitless nectarian mellows of the love of one of his multitudes of loving damsels, Sri Radha. And so he has assumed the form of Lord Chaitanya. He has tasted that love while hiding his own dark complexion with her effulgent yellow color. May that Lord Chaitanya comfort upon us his grace. This is from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adilila chapter 4, verses 52 onwards. Bhava grahane rahe tu kaila dharma, stapanatara mukyahe tu kaishu nasarvajan. To accept ecstatic love is the main reason he appeared and re established the religious system for this age. I shall now explain that reason. Everyone, please listen. Mula he tu age shlokera kaila bhas, abe kai se shloker arta prakash. Having first given hints about the verse describing the principal reasons why the Lord appeared, now I shall manifest his full meaning. Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikriti Ladiri Shakti Rasmai Ekamanto Apibuvi Puradeya Bedam Gatoto China Chaitanyakyam Prakatam Aduna Tadvayam Chaikyam Aptaram 
Radhava Duty Suvalitam Nami Krishna Swarupam. The loving affairs of Sri Krishna and Radha or transcendental manifestations of the Lord's inter internal pleasure giving potency. Although Radha and Krishna owned, are one in their identity, they separated themselves eternally. Now these two transcendental identities have again united in the form of Sri Krishna Chaitanya. I bow down to him who has manifested himself with the sentiments and complexion of Srimati Radharani, although he is Krishna himself. Purport. This text is from the diary of Srila Sarup Damodar Goswami. It appears as a fifth and the first of the first 14 verses of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Radha Krishna eka atma duvi deha dhari anyone bilasirasa ashwadana kori. Radha Krishna are one and the same but they have assumed two bodies. Thus they enjoy each other, tasting the mellows of love. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The two transcendentalists, Radha and Krishna, are a puzzle to materialists. The above description of Radha and Krishna from the diary of Srila Sarup Damodar Goswami is condensed explanation but one needs great spiritual insight to understand the mystery of these two personalities. One is enjoying in two. Sri Krishna is the potent factor and Srimati Radharani is the internal potency. According to Vedanta philosophy, there is no difference between the potent and the potency. They are identical. We cannot differ differentiate between one and the other. Anymore, we can separate fire from heat. Everything in the absolute, everything in the absolute is inconceivable in relative terms. Therefore, in relative cognizance, it is very difficult to assimilate the truth of the oneness between the potency and the potent. The philosophy of inconceivable oneness and difference, propounded by Lord Chaitanya is the only source of understanding for such intricacies of transcendence. In fact, Radharani is the internal potency of Krishna and she eternally intensifies the pleasure of Sri Krishna. Impersonalists cannot understand this without the help of Mahabhagavad devotees. The very name Radha suggests that she is eternally the topmost mistress of the comforts of Sri Krishna. As such, she is the medium transmitting the living entity service to Lord Krishna. Devotees of Vrindavan therefore seek the mercy of Srimati Radharani in order to be recognized as, a, as loving servitors of Sri Krishna. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally approaches the fallen conditioned souls of the Iron Age to deliver the highest principles of transcendental relationships with the Lord. The activities of Lord Chaitanya are primarily in the role of the pleasure giving portion of his internal potency. The absolute personality of God is Sri Krishna is the omnipotent form of transcendental existence, knowledge and bliss in full. His internal potency is exhibited first as sat or existence or in other words, as the portion that expands the, exist the existential function of the Lord, the same potency while displaying full knowledge is called chit or samvit, which explains the transcendental forms of the Lord. Finally, the same potency while playing as pleasure giving medium is known as ladini or the transcendental blissful potency. Thus, the Lord manifests his internal potency in three transcendental divisions.
the only reason that in Kali Yuga, in these times, and to the most fallen and most ignorant conditioned souls, the only reason that we are able to even understand the existence of Radha and Krishna is because of the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There is no need to try and understand Radharani or Krishna separately. If we simply understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then automatically Radha and Krishna will become manifest within our heart. That is a great secret of the, of the incarnation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is known as the Mahavadanya avatar. Rupa Goswami, when he first met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, actually when he secondly met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Allahabad, he quoted this verse, Namo Maha Vadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gora Tushe Namaha Namo, I offer my respect to the Maha Vadanyaya, the one who gives the greatest gift. Vadanya means to give or to present. And Maha means great. So Maha Vadanya. So Maha Vadanyaya. Why is he called Maha Vadanyaya? Why does he give? What is this highest gift? Krishna Prema Pradayate, who gives us love of Krishna. Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya, the very same Krishna has taken the form as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya, Namne Gora Tushe Namaha. And he has taken the color of gold because that is the color of Radharani. In other words, Krishna has taken the position of Radharani to taste a sublime love for him. Therefore, he is golden in color because Radharani is golden in color. Tapta Kanchana Gorangi. Gorangi Radharani is golden like the molten gold. Tapta Kanchana. Molten gold is extremely bright and extremely effulgent. So Tapta Kanchana Gorangi. Radhe Vrindabaneshwari. She is the queen of Vrindavan. Tapta Kanchana Gorangi, Radhe Vrindavana Ishvari, Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Haripriya. She is the daughter of King Vrishabhanu and Rupa Goswami offers his respect. So also in a song, Radhika Stava, which I sang at the beginning, which is also composed by Rupa Goswami, it is stated, Vrishabhanu Dadi Nava Shashi Leke, Lalita Saki Guna Ramita Bishaki. The Radharani is manifested like the moon arising from the ocean of Lord of King Vrishabhanu. Vrishabhanu is a father. So she is described like the moon arising from the ocean, just like when the demigods and the demons, when they churn the ocean of milk, the moon was manifested from this ocean. So Radharani becomes manifested when our dealings with Krishna become surcharged with the waves of ecstatic love, just like the ocean of milk became agitated by the churning of the Mandara mountain. And then from this churning, the moon arose. So when the churning of the, of the waves of ecstatic love of Krishna becomes manifested in our heart, then Radharani will become visible. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to try and understand Radharani separately. It is actually not possible because if you study all the Bhagavad Gita, if you study the Mahabharata, even if you study the Srimad Bhagavatam, you will find that Radharani's name is not mentioned even once. You would think that in the 10th canto, which describes the intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna, you would think that in that canto, there would be so much information about Radharani. But no, she is not mentioned. It is just said that among all Krishna's girlfriends, there is one particular girlfriend whose service, Aradhanam, was so powerful that, uh, that uh, she was accepted as the greatest servitor of Lord Krishna. 
So Vrishabhanu Dadi Navasashi Deke, this new moon, Lalita Saki Guna Ramita Bishake. She became even more dear to Krishna. She became more qualified. She was more qualified and more loving even than Lalita and Vishaka, her two constant companions. So to understand Radharani, we have to take the process of accepting the mercy of Lord Krishna. No need to try separately. When we are qualified, then automatically knowledge of Radha and Krishna will become manifested in our heart. We all have a spiritual body which is covered by the material body. There is no use thinking that my spiritual body should be immediately manifested because we are now conditioned by this material body. All of us in the material world have taken this material body because of a previous karma, which is unlimited. Anadi karma fali. The fruits of a karma is without beginning. And that caused us to sink into this material world. Living in a material world means living in ignorance. So even though the spiritual body is there, it is covered over by layer after layer after layer after layer of karma. So we need to clean this layer. And by cleaning this layer, by chanting the names of Krishna, by hearing about Krishna, gradually we become so qualified that Krishna will be very happy to introduce us to Srimati Radharani. That's how it works. No other way. Our spiritual body will become manifested when Krishna sees that we are pure. It is a process of purification. Now you may say, well, we have Radha and Krishna in the temple. We can worship her there. There is Srimati Radharani and Krishna. But also there we have to be very, very careful. Siddha Prabhupada, when he installed Radha Krishna in the temples of Iskon, he very clearly said that we are worshiping Radha and Krishna no doubt, but we are worshiping in the mood of Satya Narayan, of Lakshmi Narayan. What does that mean? That means that we don't take any liberties with Radha and Krishna. We don't think that now we have entered into the Ras Lila. Now we can see Radha and Krishna dancing. No, the mood of Lakshmi Narayan means that we worship Radha and Krishna with great devotion, great respect, and great uh, discipline, and great uh, great discipline and great concern. We don't take any liberties. At no time has any one of our acharyas ever said, now I have seen Krishna, now I have seen Radharani, now I have my spiritual body. That is not something which is for us to understand at our stage. Even the six Goswamis of Vrindavan they never said, now I have seen Radharani, now I have seen Krishna. Let me go to the forest of Mahavan. Let me go to Sevakunj and watch Krishna and the gopis dance. No such thing. On the contrary, this, it is said, Hey Radhe, Braja Devi Ke. Hey Radharani, Hey Goddess of Vrindavan. Cha Lalite, Hey Lalite. Shuno Kutaha, where are you? Nanda Shuno. My dear Krishna, Radharani, Lalita, Krishna, Kutaha, where are you? Sri Govardhana, Kalpapada, Batale, Kalindivane, Kutaha. Where are you? Are you under the desire trees of Vrindavan? Are you on the bank of the Jamuna? Kutaha, where are you? This is their mood. Go Shanto, Iti Sarvato, Brajapure, Kedair Mahavivalo. They created a great uproarious a noise, a great uproarious sound of kirtan, chanting and chanting with the hope of seeing Srimati Radharani and Krishna. But never at any time did they say, now I have seen Radha and Krishna. That is not possible. Similarly, Srila Prabhupada, when he was aboard the Jaladuta coming to America, he wrote a beautiful song called Prayers at the Lotus Feet of Krishna. And this song consists of nine verses, but the refrain of the song, the refrain means this, the, the, the verse that you sing in between all the verses. So you sing the refrain, 
sing verse 1, sing the refrain, sing verse 2, sing the refrain, sing verse 3, like that. So the refrain goes, Krishna Tava Punya Hoi Bebhai, E Punya Kori Bejabe, Radha Rani Kushi Hobe, Dhruva Ati Boli Tomatai. I'm telling you, my dear friend, Dhruva Ati, very, very clearly, very, very uh, directly, that Krishna Tava Punya, that your mercy from Krishna, E punya kori bejaba, you will get that mercy, Radharani Kushi Habe, when you have the mercy of Srimati Radharani. So he, he made this refrain. So you would think that the rest of the song is about this subject matter of Krishna's mercy and Radharani's mercy, but not at all. The rest of the song is about his commitment to his guru. Sri Siddhanta Saraswati Sachisuta Priya Ati, Prabhupada says that my guru Siddhanta Saraswati, he was very, very dear to Sachisuta, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna Seva Jar Tulanai. In fact, my guru's service to Krishna cannot be balanced. It is so great that you cannot balance it with anything else. Tula, a tula is a, is a, is a balance. So you put the goods on the left and the weights on the right. So on the left, the goods are Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati service to Krishna. So the scale is like that. On the other side, you can put anything you want, but it will never make the scale balance. So Krishna Seva Jar Tulanai. Say, say, Mahanta Guru, Jagatera Madhya Guru, Krishna Bhakti Dei Tai Tai. He is the great guru the greatest Acharya within the universe. Why? Because he is giving love of God. Again and again, little by little, he is giving love of God. Tara Icha Balavan, his desire was so strong, that his desire to have the name of Lord Goranga be spread in the Western world comes from Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Priti Vite Nagaradi Asamudra Nada Nadi. Shakale Loi Krishna Nam. From the oceans, from the rivers to the oceans, from the villages to the mountains to the cities, in every place on this planet, little by little, the name of Krishna will be given. So Prabhupada made this prediction in September 1963 five on the boat on the Jaladuta on Jamasnami day he wrote the song and even though he mentions that only by Radharani's mercy do we get Krishna's mercy he concluded the song he carries on with the song glorifying Bhakti Siddhanta and telling us how important it is to take the ascending path of devotional service, that we, we go forward step by step according to the mercy that we receive descending down upon us. The activities of Krishna are actually a mystery to this world. It's not that the Bhagavatam was written yesterday. The Bhagavatam and the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam has been existing on this planet for four, five, almost 5,000 years but very, very few people understood it, even in the Vedic culture. Very, very few people could understand the, the intricate, intricate secrets of Srimad Bhagavatam. Because Srimad Bhagavatam, or Krishna's activities, cannot be understood directly. Therefore, there are nine cantos, and then the tenth canto explaining the activities of Krishna are presented. First, you have to, and all the first nine cantos simply describe again and again Krishna's activities, Krishna's devotees, Krishna's power, Krishna's relationship with his devotees, Krishna's position as the Supreme Lord, again and again and again, the position of the living entity as a spirit soul, how he can relate to others, to others on the basis of spiritual life, then when you become qualified, when you have a proper understanding that I am a Kshudra Jiva, a limited Jiva, a limited soul, and Krishna is a Paramatma, is a Supreme Soul, 
when I understand that relationship between me and the Supreme Lord, then we can begin to understand Krishna's pastimes, beginning with his birth and ending with his Dwarka Lila pastimes. But in even then, in those pastimes, there is no description of Srimati Radharani. There is only a description of the gopis and that there was one significant gopi who is the most expert at loving Krishna. So, there are many, many books written about Srimati Radharani, about the gopis, about the Rasa Leela. But both Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur and Srila Prabhupada forbade us to read those books. Books like the Govinda Lilamrita, Radha Rasa Suranidhi, Gita Govinda, those books are not available for us to read. Neither did Prabhupada translate them, neither did Prabhupada mention them, neither did Prabhupada recommend that we read them, because it is not possible to understand Radharani by our own effort. Just we should very humbly serve Krishna, and then when Krishna is pleased, he will manifest knowledge of his intimate pastimes within our heart. Just like you, nobody expresses his intimate feelings. Nobody expresses his intimate thoughts to anyone who is not very close and very trusted. So when we become close to Krishna, when we become trusted by Krishna, when Krishna trusts us, then knowledge of his pastimes will automatically come. And then at that time, we will be trained by Srimati Radharani and her followers on the highest levels of how to worship Krishna. But before that day comes, we worship Radha and Krishna as Lakshmi Narayan. With great reverence, with great devotion, with great attention, we worship them as the highest and we consider ourselves the lowest. We don't jump to the platform of Vrindavan. Although we can get a taste of Vrindavan, simply by worshipping Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But also be careful, even though Prabhupada has given us Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, during Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur's presence, he forbade his disciples from reading certain parts of Chaitanya Charitamrita that dealt with the dealings between Radha and Krishna. So careful he was. So, so careful we have to be. We should never forget where we are coming from. We are not coming from a position of transcendence. We are coming from a position of ignorance. We are coming from the position of identifying with the body. But as I said at the beginning of the talk, the, the uh, what do you call it in English? The, uh, I forget, anyhow, the most wonderful thing about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The most wonderful thing about Srila Prabhupada and Gaudiya Vaishnavism is that Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give the highest blessing. And he has come to give the blessing to the most fallen. Mahavadanya, the highest blessing. He is the most merciful incarnation. So what is in spiritual terms, what does most merciful means? That means he is given something which is the best. There is nothing more available. <clears throat> there is nothing better available. That is the most mercy. And he is given us to the most fallen. Because if there was someone even more fallen than us, it wouldn't be the most mercy. So the most mercy is the highest possible gift to the lowest possible qualif qualification. And therefore, we all get a chance to understand Srimati Radharani. There is no other reason. It's nothing to do with us. We should never forget that it is simply the Mahavadanya avatar, the great mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? And... Uh, That mercy, 
Anarpita charim chirat. Anarpita means not given. Charim chirat for a very, very long time. As I often explain, sometimes the government, they give an amnesty to the people in the prison. In other words, they say from tomorrow, because of the king's birthday or the queen's birthday or because of the Republic Day or whatever, the government gives freedom to all prisoners up to a certain point. Therefore, most of the prisoners who are in prison for lower crimes are released, even though the prison term is not finished. That is called an amnesty. And that amnesty is a sign of grace from the king. It is a sign of his benevolence, the benevolence part of his power. So Krishna has unlimited power and he's keeping us in this prison, in this Durga, in this prison house. Of course, we are keeping ourselves here. But sometimes, even though we are not qualified, he will give an, he will give an amnesty. And that amnesty comes by the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Anarpita Charim Chirat, for a very long time, Krishna is thinking, I haven't given my full mercy to the conditioned souls. Karunaya Vatir Nakalo. Samar Paitum Unato Jwala Rasam Swabhakti Sriyam. And what is that mercy? Very own devotion to myself, Krishna is thinking. This devotion, Bhakti Priyam, this dear devotion to myself, I haven't given to the conditioned souls for a very, very long time. Hari Purata Sundara Duty Kadamba Sandipitaha. Therefore, let me take an incarnation as my own devotee. Let me teach people with my example how to become free from material life. And therefore, anyone who sees Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, anyone who chants the name of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, anyone who comes into the knowledge of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu becomes free, gets the lesson how to practice devotional service. Sadari Daya Kandare Spuratuva Sachinandana. So Rupa Goswami who wrote this verse, he blesses his devotees and we are all followers of Rupa, of Rupa Goswami. We are called Rupanuga. The Madhva Brahma Sampradaya is made up by the followers of Rupa Goswami. We are known as Rupanugas. So Rupa Goswami blesses us that may Lord Chaitanya always reside within the deepest cave of your heart. This is the greatest benediction that you can receive and the greatest benediction that you can give. And how to get this benediction? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, simply be humble and tolerant. 99.9% .9 of obstacles in spiritual life arise when we forget to be humble, when we forget to be tolerant, when we don't see with equal vision, when we don't see through the eyes of Krishna, but we see through our own selfish viewpoint. So let us pray today to Srimati Radharani to bless us so that we can serve Krishna nicely and so that Krishna will be pleased to give us a position among Radharani's followers so we may be trained one day how to worship Radha Krishna in the spiritual world. Thank you very much. So now we have some comments. Love Rishi is there. Atma Vidya Prabhu, Jai Radha, Shambhulal, Hare Krishna Shambhu Prabhu from Vrindavan, Krishna Priya, Raju Mengrani, Haribol Raju from Jaipur. Are you back in Jaipur? Rob Ellings, Krishna Priya Devi Dasi, Albert Vamsa, Jai Prabhu Dandavats, Rob Ellings, and Devanand Dubey. So, Namo Nama, he says in Devanagri. Krishna Priya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu, Radha Krishna Nai Anya. Lord Chaitanya is Lord Krishna with the color and mood of Srimati Radharani. All glories to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nai Anya. That verse is from a song by from a song by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati called Guru Parampara. Let me see. Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nai Anya, Rupa Nuga, Janera Jivan. 
that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not different from Radha Krishna. And he is the G- Janera Jivan. He is the life of those people who are followers of Rupa Goswami. So if you have any Krishna, if you have any questions, please type in your comments. Rob Ellings, without Radha, there is no meaning to Krishna from teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Without energy, there is no meaning to the energetic. And without the energetic, there is no energy. Similarly, without Radha, there is no meaning to Krishna. Haribo. Haribo, Rob. Thank you very much for that wonderful quote. Actually, we make a big show of uh, being very careful of not and of, of being uh, not qualified to know Radha Krishna. But actually, every devotee has a special very private place for Radharani within his heart. It cannot be otherwise because we are the mercy, we are the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As soon as we chant Sri Krishna Chaitanya, then automatically knowledge of Radharani begins to manifest within our heart. But it is a very private and very secret and very intimate place within our heart. It is not to be shared with anybody. It is something which you can assimilate, you can absorb in your heart, you can taste, you can relish, but don't make it cheap. Let's see, there's more comments. Ah, Rob Ealing says, I've known you from my early days, 89, 90 in Amsterdam, but never realized how knowledgeable you are. I I have got no knowledge. (laughs) <laughs> All I'm missing is my donkey's ears, but I'm the biggest ass. The only knowledge I have is that I have no knowledge. But I'm trying my best. So Krishna Priya Devi Dasi, Anarpita Charim Chirat. By worshipping Lord Chaitanya, we will gradually enter Krishna's pastimes and understand Srimati Radharani. Isn't it Prabhu? Absolutely correct. I couldn't have put it better. So Krishna Priya, you should also give classes online. Now we have an opportunity with Facebook and with uh, with different other programs like Zoom or whatever. We can speak about Krishna. We can share our feelings about Krishna. Preaching about Krishna is not difficult as long as you don't try to come off more than what you are. You simply express what you feel. Simply express what is within your heart in a humble way, always thinking of the audience. And then uh, Krishna will become pleased with us. Prabhupada mentions in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna gives a hint, not a hint. He clearly says, what is the process to become love, to become dear to Krishna? Because everybody is dear to Krishna. But Krishna doesn't reveal himself to anybody who is not in a loving mood towards him. So to obtain this loving mood, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Ya idam paramam guyam mad bhakteshu abhidakshati. That person who explains this confidential knowledge, param guyam, guyam means confidential, and param means highly transcendental, highly elevated. So a person who understands and explains this knowledge of our relationship with me, bhakti mai param kritva, he will get my bhakti param. Bhakti param means to understand rather than Krishna. Mami Vaishas, yes, Samsaya. And when he leaves this body, he comes to me directly. He comes to me. What does it mean? Doesn't mean that a, it means that a preacher, one who explains Krishna to his devotees, when he leaves this body, he goes into one of the universes wherein Krishna is performing his pastimes. When Krishna's pastimes are finished, on this universe, it moves into another universe and into another universe, just like the sun moves through the different sections of the sky. So Krishna moves through universe after universe eternally and this eternal Lila. When the devotee leaves his 
physical body, he gets promoted to that leela and again gets trained by Krishna's devotees how to worship Radha and Krishna. And then Krishna says, Nachatasman Manushyeshu Kashimam Priyakritama. That out of all men, out of all people, there is no one as dear to me as he. Bhavita Nachameta Smad Anya Priyatara Bhuvi. There will not be anyone more dear to me ever. So a preacher, a person who explains Krishna consciousness, who takes the time to share his knowledge of Krishna with others, becomes the most dear to Krishna, and he doesn't come back to this material world. Jai. Thank you very much. So next week we will go back to the Gita class. We will start with the eighth chapter. And we will go back to the ISKCON Amsterdam Facebook page. Please note. Thank you very much. Srimati Radharani Ki Jai, Lalita Vishaka Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande, Jai Nitai Gaur Hari Hari Bol.